Now, Reuters breaking views why bouncing beads, the proposed merger of BAE and EADS, would harm UK interests. And we re revisit the Barclays rejig. With me is uh, Robert Cole. Good to see you again, Robert. Hi. Um, so, so this this BAE EADS angle of yours on breaking views is sparked by something Alistair Darling has said. Yeah, um, it was interviewed in the in the FT, suggesting that somehow because the Germans and the French had uh, equity stakes or would were were lining up to have equity stakes in this new bigger entity that they're hoping to get together, that that somehow gave uh, the French and the Germans greater say in the way that this thing would operate. Now, it's quite hard to argue that at face value, but we're, we're saying two things that, that, this morning. The first is that um, I'm not sure that you know it's right to su suggest that simply because the UK doesn't have an equity stake or won't have an equity stake in this new business doesn't mean to say that they don't have any influence. They have plenty of influence. They have yeah. a golden share for one thing, uh, but they also have influence over the way the company is uh, operating in this country. So why is, the why, why, why is Darling making a fuss about it? Then? Well, I mean, I think he's got a point. I think you know uh, that there are some relatively low-level sort of political uh, concerns about this, but we think that he's over, over, overstating the case. It's good that he's putting it out there, but overstating the case and perhaps not quite interpreting it in the same way as we did. But th there's another more important thing to this, really, which is that take all that kind of stuff aside, I think it, we think that it is against the UK's national interest if this deal doesn't go yep. through, because it's, it, it will, if you like, relegate BAE to a relatively small part course, course, player in the European the, the deadline, in the global scene. Deadline's next week, the 10th. Yes, yeah. uh, is that going to stick? I am assuming that uh, that'll be extended. Um, you know, this is a put up or shut up rules, mm -hmm. but it is a complicated deal. There are lots of people to get round to the table. There are, you know, commercial and political um, uh, considerations to take in mind. And I thought if anyone had, a, had an argument to extend this sort of period, uh, I, I'd have thought that BAE Eads will, and I expected it to be extended. Yeah. All right. Um, the Barclays reject happened yesterday. You wrote a piece yesterday. Your new guy, Dominic Elliott, wrote yeah. a piece yesterday. Um, it was his first piece. Nice piece. Um, there's more to come, is, is his message, his uh, breaking views message. Yeah, I mean, it looks quite... Quite big stuff at the at the outset. We've got uh, you know uh, um, fixed interest and equities being mashed together into one unit, and at the same time the structure being split apart into more sort of um, uh, regional uh, bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, uh, being decentralised. Those are quite big moves. Uh, there are some comings and goings with personnel as well. I mean, but uh, well, and, and of course Barclays is right at the eye of the storm, isn't it? In terms of the bank, the investment bank that everyone's looking at because of all that LIBOR stuff. Um, so I'm, it's I'm, enough for you guys for now? Well, th there's, um, uh, it's the right thing to do, and, but it's, it's nothing revolutionary, or it's, it's not quite as revolutionary as it might look. Other banks are uh, structured on a similar line anyway. We think there might be some more to come, yeah. Okay, Robert, thanks a lot for that. Robert Cole from Breaking Views. More Breaking Views, of course, in our US edition every weekday, 12.30 Eastern, 17.30 BST. I'm Axel Threlfall. This is Reuters.